Hi folks and welcome back to a, another tutorial. So this is the first of two videos on how to create realistic Gaussian beams in Blender. In this video we'll go through step by step how to use shader nodes to essentially plot the intensity distribution of Gaussian beams. If you'd rather skip the building step and go straight to using the shader, you can download it free from my Gumroad, skip this part 1 video and go to the second one which gives a walkthrough on how to use those shaders. First some background. A Gaussian beam has a Gaussian intensity distribution at any point along the beam in its cross-section. The beam's width converges to a narrowest point, the beam waist, denoted W0, and then diverges out again. And the characteristic length scale over which the width varies is given by the radii length, Z subscript R. So fortunately, we have an equation for Gaussian beams. R and Z denote cylindrical coordinates, so we'll first need to transform from the default Cartesian coordinates in Blender. The beam width, W, is a function of position along the beam path in the Z direction and is related to the radial length and the beam waist. I0 is just the total intensity, which is related to the total power and the beam waist. So let's get started. So I'll be using the beam object from my optical components pack, but to be honest you can use whatever you want. You can use a cube, you could use a cylinder, it doesn't really matter because the shape of the beam is going to be defined entirely by the shaders, not the actual object. I'll also be using cycles to view this uh, effect, which is basically a volumetric shading effect. You can use EV for this, but you just need to make sure that the resolution of the volumetric effect is enough. So I'm just going to create a panel for the shader editor on the side where we'll be working. So let's go ahead and create a new material, which I've done here, and just call that Gaussian B. And we are going to immediately just delete the principal BSDF uh, because we are going to be using the principal volume. So go ahead and look for the principled volume node and plug that into the volume output. Let's also apply this material to the laser beam. So in the modifers tab, I'm just going to come and select Gaussian beam. And so now we have a principal volume, very uniform, plugged in. So the first thing we're going to do is compute the cylindrical coordinate system. To do that, we need to look for a texture coordinate node, a mapping node, a separate XYZ node, a combined XYZ node, and a vector math node. So if I plug the object coordinates into the mapping, the mapping into the separate XYZ, we can now with Node Wrangler enabled, if you haven't please enable Node Wrangler, let's have a look at the coordinates that we have going on this beam object. So unfortunately the X axis for this object is the axis that runs along the beam's long axis, so that's equivalent to the Z direction in the Gaussian beam equation. Coordinates Y and Z are our orthogonal axes transverse to the beam axis that we're going to use to create the radius value. So to do that we first need to isolate the Y and the Z, so let's go ahead and plug just the Y and the Z into the combined XYZ. Then we want to compute the, the length of that vector. So let's plug that into the vector math, convert it to length. And if we have a look at that, now we can see that we have what looks like the start of a Gaussian beam profile, not quite a Gaussian yet, but we have the intensity going from zero all the way to whatever the length is that's currently mapped onto the surface shader. So this, with this we have our radius value. So let's go ahead and frame that and call this radius. Let's go ahead and take that radius and now start plotting the Gaussian part. So to do that, we need to first add a few math nodes. Let's go ahead and create the exponent of the exponential to square the radius value and then multiply that by minus two. So I'm just going to duplicate the math node, convert it to multiply into the first socket. I'm going to take the powered radius and multiply it by minus two. Shift D again to duplicate the math node. I then want to create another power and a multiply node. Let's go ahead and move the material output and the principal volume away a bit. Give ourselves some more space. And so now I want to multiply the 2R squared or the minus 2R squared with the square of what will be our WZ value. So we need to now compute WZ. And so the equation for WZ looks something like this. It's the beam waste square root of 1 plus z over Rayleigh length squared. So we first want to create a parameter for the Rayleigh length. I'm just going to use a value node for now. 
as a placeholder, but just add a value node, press N, and we're going to just rename this node the Rayleigh length. Go ahead and add a math node, set it to divide. And what we want to do is divide the Z, which is our X in this case, and divide that by the Rayleigh length. And then we want to square that value. And then let's duplicate again, and we want to set it to add and add one. So this is everything that sits inside the square root. Let's go ahead and then duplicate again and turn that to a square root and just take the square root of all of that. Next, we need to multiply this by the beam waste value or W naught. I'm going to duplicate the value node for the Rayleigh length again and rename this to W naught. Duplicate the square root node and change that to multiply. I now want to multiply the square rooted value with W naught. And that completes our equation for WZ. Let's go ahead and frame all of these math nodes together and call this WZ. So with WZ set up, we can plug this into the second power. Let's just reroute it a bit to make it easier to see. And the exponent should be just squared. And so now we have completed the exponent of the exponential. So now let's go ahead, duplicate the power node, plug the multiply into the exponent, and we want to set the base to e. So let's just go ahead and type e. So we have e to the power of all of this stuff, which is the start of our Gaussian beam. So the next part, we need to calculate the prefactor that goes in front of the exponential. Duplicate one of the math nodes, and we first need to compute w0 divided by wz. Let's set this to divide, and so let's do exactly that. Let's take w0 and divide that by wz, and then we want to square the whole thing. So duplicate the math node, let's not clamp it, duplicate and set it to power, set the exponent to 2, and then take the output of the divide and put it into the base. We have w0 divided by wz squared. And now we need a third input, which will be our intensity, I0. Let's duplicate again the value node we have for W0 and rename this one as I0. Then let's multiply I0 with the output of the previous calculation. And this gives us our prefactor. So I'm going to just frame this and call this prefactor. And so now we are basically ready to go. What we need to do is multiply the prefactor with the, with the exponential. Let's go ahead and for math, multiply, multiply that with the prefactor. Let's go ahead and take the value and plug it into the emission strength of the principal volume and also the density. Go ahead and disconnect the surface value and we have the beginnings of a Gaussian beam. So something is clearly not quite right here. So let's go have a look at our nodes. And the first thing that I notice is incorrect is that we are multiplying minus 2r squared with wz. This should be a divide. So let's go ahead and change that to divide. If I hide this back plane and I bring down w0, now we start to see the actual Gaussian beam. So this is looking pretty good. So here is where we're currently at and we already have a Gaussian beam looking thing. So it's entirely volumetric. As you can see the beam itself, the shape of the beam, it's got nothing to do with the radius of this beam object. I crank up the radius, it just serves to define the outer bounds. This beam object, given that it's built from splines, if I come to edit mode and start playing with the spline shape, I can just pull out the beam, make it longer or shorter. And of course now, since we have all of these parameters like radial length, beam waste and intensity, I can crank up the intensity to change the brightness of the beam. I can also change the radial length. So if I make the radial length really small, the beam narrows very aggressively. So that's looking pretty good. In the asset that I've released, there is a additional node to compute the radian length and the intensity based on the power of the beam, the wavelength of the beam, and actually even control the light of the, the Gaussian beam based on wavelength. But besides that, that's basically it for part one. So part two of the video is the actual shader being put to use. Thanks as always. Please do leave a like and a comment if you found it useful. Subscribe for more content and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.